on the 21st of June, there's a protest in Westminster to make our schools more inclusive. I will be going. If you'd like to join us, please do. If you can't join us, please share the information. Please sign the petition. I will leave the poster at the end of this video. Just do what you can to help. It would be amazing. Thank you. It's so sad that this can't be a nice experience for our children. Children are actually suicidal and killing themselves. I have had to deal with that for the last two years, not knowing if my child is going to actually live through their school experience. Not whether they're going to get their GCSEs, not whether they're going to get bullied, not whether they're going to make it into a really good, well-paid job, whether they're actually going to live through their school experience. It's crazy. It's crazy. So many children are dying. And so many children are unhappy. It can't go on. It just can't go on. Hi, my name's Emily and this is my story. I have four children. Four are diagnosed with dyslexia. Three are diagnosed with autism. And we have been on the waiting list for the fourth one for two years, nearly. Not quite. Um, when I was younger, I always loved children and it was like my priority to have children. And I had my first when I was 25. Um, bad reflux as baby. Um, mostly fine other than that. Then I had my second and there was quite a lot of difference. Eventually, around three, we realised she had blue ear and a lot of her traits were put down to not hearing anything. I always felt there was something different, something else other than just glue ear. I thought probably ADHD. Um, but knowing that it's difficult to get girls diagnosed, when I had my third, who happened to be a boy, and I knew almost... I reckon I knew in the womb that he was um, <laughs> going to be busy, let's say. Um, <clears throat> so knowing that I had a boy who in my head was autistic, I thought I'll get him diagnosed and then focus on getting the second one diagnosed because hopefully it would be easier that way around. So when he was about three, I started the process. Nobody saw it except for me, um, he would go to nursery and they, um, he got like the busy B award or something because he was always on the go. Um, but he at home was completely different, completely different. And I'd already been struggling for a couple of years to get my eldest to school who didn't, particularly enjoy school um so the first year and a half was difficult we changed schools the next couple of years were difficult we changed schools again by this time I had the second one in school who was also struggling and there would be days I remember days when I had to actually carry them to the car drive them to school in their pyjamas and I took them to the office thinking that they'd say oh yeah yeah just come and they can get changed in the bathroom they said leave them with me so I did and I cried all the way home and they said that they made them walk in past everybody in their pyjamas I have never felt so bad in my whole life but these are the struggles that I was forced to make as a parent because I am being forced to send them to school, which is what they hate. Then we moved schools again and number three was now due to start school. By this point, I'd started filming his behaviour because it was so, so 
so hard and nobody believed me I it was awful absolutely awful so I started filming it and showing my friends and showing the doctors and stuff and they were like oh okay we kind of see what you mean now um so he got diagnosed about five I think so around the time he started school and I'd had my fourth by then and my fourth I'd just sleep the whole time it's absolutely brilliant <laughs> which is what I needed by then I had so my first child I couldn't put down she would scream my second would scream if I held her too much and my third yeah from from the second he was born he screamed for about five years six years um really hard really hard I really feel for parents out there I know exactly what you're going through and it is hard and you need support and help and not judgmental looks and this is why we need to sort the schools out because that is 80% of my problem. I think my children would be so much happier if they didn't have to deal with the situation at school. Um, so I got my third to school and luckily he had the diagnosis because I'm not sure they would have necessarily diagnosed him through school. Um, but they um, had diagnosed him by then and I was carrying him into school without pants, without socks. I, I would get undressed, he would get undressed, back into his pyjamas. I've never seen somebody get undressed and into their pyjamas so quickly. Within 30 seconds, I would turn my back and he'd be back in his pyjamas. So I'd be turning up to school getting told off because he didn't have pants on, and didn't have socks on, didn't have shoes on. But he would take them off on the way. What was I meant to do? I, I, I And then I couldn't get the, him on. You know, my priority at that point was getting him into school, not tackling clothes. That shouldn't be my priority. My priority had to be getting him into school. And he absolutely hated it. I mean, once he was there, he was fine because he didn't like people looking at him. So he'd be really quiet. And then he'd come out kicking me because he'd had such an awful day. Um... Then it just carried on, really, throughout school life. Um, my eldest is literally two weeks away from finishing GCSEs, which I never thought would happen in a million years. I uh, don't know how we did it. I mean, basically, our relationship broke down last summer um, because all I've ever done is fight her to go to school. That's not something that you should be spending your life doing when you've got kids that's not what my dream of having kids was meant to be like I was meant to enjoy my time with them they're only little ones she's going to be 16 and my memories of her life are fighting her to go to school that's not nice I couldn't homeschool I couldn't homeschool firstly because they wouldn't listen to me and at home they were different than at um actual school um and I'm not I didn't do my GCSEs because I was struggling so much at school so my dad took me out so I, I don't have any GCSEs so I don't even know what I would actually teach them and they're so smart they're so so smart and it's such a shame that they are missing out on their education because their clothes are uncomfortable. That's a big part of it. 10, 20% of it, their clothes are uncomfortable. They can't go to the loo when they need to. That's a human right. That is a human right to be able to go to the loo when you need to. I have two girls. They have periods. If they are not allowed to go to the loo, when they need the loo, that is a disaster. How are they meant to stand up in the middle of a class of 30 and say, just started my period. Can I go to the loo? For the teacher to turn around and probably say, well, you should have gone at break time. Break time? They don't have. 
they used to have actual breaks to actually communicate with their with their friends now they have what 10 minutes in the morning then half an hour at lunch and the queue to get their lunch is 40 minutes so there's a lot of children out there not eating their lunch because they don't have time to actually get their lunch and actually eat it so they don't eat i mean that's a a necessity that's another human right so we've taken away the ability to go to the loo when they need to we've taken away the ability to eat and some of these kids aren't getting meals at home so when do they eat and then friendships well we've taken that away as well because they don't have time to talk to their friends i know there's a lot about bullying but they still need that interaction with their friends so it's very difficult school classes i think need to be smaller they just somehow somehow need to get classes smaller make schools bigger so that they can have more class rooms but less people in them the teachers need to be taught some teachers are absolutely amazing and my second child is basically not going to school at all and one teacher changed that by saying just the simplest thing, which was, do you know, I know you feel like you're behind, but actually we're going to be going over all the work again from April. So if you can come in from April, uh, you know, relearn it all. Because she was overwhelmed, because she'd missed so much school, she started going into school because of that one teacher. How many children out there stopped going to school because one teacher said one thing to them? People need to be careful because words hurt. Words really hurt. And you need to look at the individual and think, actually, by me telling them off for being five minutes late to class is going to mortify them. So they're not actually going to walk into my class ever again. So maybe I'll let it slide and just not mention to them that they're five minutes late. If they're more than five minutes late, they get transgressed. I didn't know what that meant. It means that if you're more than five minutes late, you've walked to your class, you're now late. You then have to walk from your class to another classroom to then do your work. Which, if you ask them why they're late, it's because there was a queue for the loo. Because they're not allowed to go to the loo in class, so they had to go at break time. So they had to wait for the queue to die down. They were still eating their lunch because that lunch time wasn't long enough for them to eat their lunch or get their lunch. You know, so they are being late to classes because of the school system and then they're being told off for being late for classes. It's, it, it's mind boggling, actually mind boggling. Um, I yeah it it is just a disaster and I can't do the fight anymore I actually feel that I can't do the fight anymore and when my fourth child at eight turned around and refused to go to school and would be crying crying because the fear of school you just think what is this? What is this doing to them? It's not that my children don't want to go to school. It's not that they don't want to learn. The problem is they are scared of school. There is a fear around schools. And that's what we need to look at. And that's what we need to change. And if a normal mainstream school can't make that doable then there should be more special schools. More schools for people who literally just can't manage mainstream school, but can still do their GCSEs. I've looked at, at special schools, but they don't do GCSEs because they think that if you need a special school, your brain doesn't work enough to actually pass your GCSEs. Well, that's not the case. So why can't we have a school that they can go to, feel safe and secure, learn and pass their GCSEs. Why can't, why can't we have that?
Why can't we have that? And if they can't do that at main screen, they can't do that at special school, where can they do that? Anyway, I... Yeah, it's been a struggle, a real struggle, and I don't want to pressure my children to go to going to school because it's it's horrible. It's like you're making your child go into a burning building. You're saying to your child, this is the best thing for you. Run into that burning building. Go on, sit in that burning building for the day. It's the best thing for you. They, they won't learn in that burning building because it's on fire. But if you could maybe put the fire out and calm it down, they might learn. School uniform, for, for starters. My two youngest, the school that they go to is amazing because they are now allowed to wear jogging bottoms if they are the colour of the school uniform, which is a huge deal. My third child, who I could never get to school for three or four years, when his school uniform was relaxed, he went to school. He goes to school every day and he's actually my best behaved. The hardest child is now the easiest child out of my four. And it was that simple that how can you learn in a lesson if all you can think about is the fact that your feet are throbbing because your your shoes are uncomfortable or because you've got an itchy label or your knee is rubbing against the hard material of your trousers. You can't focus on two plus two equals four because you're focusing on your knee. Right now, your knee is actually hurting you because of the trousers that you're wearing. You won't know what the teacher's telling you and then you'll get told off for not learning, but actually all you can focus on is your trousers. That's something really simple, really simple that can change instantly. First, school uniforms need to be more comfortable. Second, loo breaks. It's a must. Just let them go to the loo. Just let them go to the loo, for God's sake. And third, bit bit longer to have your lunch, maybe. Bit longer to have a break. Maybe make the lessons a little shorter and give them a bit more time to process the information that they've been given and and to have a bit of space in between each lesson because that's really important for them to learn they need some downtime anyway that's my story um sorry <laughs> you can tell i'm very passionate um yeah i shall be protesting on the 21st of june in westminster to see what we can do to make schools better, more inclusive for people, for everybody. Mm -hmm.